So Infinix just launched the Zero Ultra and there's been quite a buzz about this device on the internet and I have to say that it is very well deserved. This is one of those mid-range devices that gives off a flagship vibe. It's a pretty exciting design to start with. 200 megapixel primary camera on the back and arguably the fastest charging speed on any device that I've ever tested and probably in the entire world. In fact, it's safe to say that this is possibly the best value mid-range device that money can buy. But it's not to say that this is a perfect device though. We'll cover all of that and more in this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Be sure to hit that like button so more people can benefit from the knowledge that we'll be sharing about the Infinix Zero Ultra in this video. All right, so without further ado, let's get to the video. The device comes in the trademark big box of all Infinix devices. Thankfully, it comes with just about everything you will need for this device. Right at the top, once you open the box, is the device covered in branded wrapping. Underneath that is the free MTN voucher that gets you 1.5 gigabytes of free data, which is cool. Taking out the layer divider, we get a box containing the SIM ejector tool, the x pack invite, a screen protector, the dollar like X Club invite, and a pretty interesting addition here is a card that grants you access to a limited edition animated NFT and this is what my NFT looked like. The next thing we get is the Clairphone case Type-C to 3.5mm adapter already informing you that this device does not come with a 3.5mm headphone port. Either way, it still comes with a Type-C wired headphone, Type-C to Type-C USB charge cord for you know charging your phone and then there is the massive 180 watt charging brick that is supposed to take your phone from 0 to 100% in 12 minutes. We'll see how true that is in a bit. And that is about everything you get in the box. Now, taking the wrap off of this device for the first time, I was shocked at the level of work that had gone into the design of the Infinix Zero Ultra. I'm a big fan of this design. And I mean, you know, just let's look at it. It's a work of art. And this cost light silver color that we've gotten on here has this embossed 3D textured glass on the back with like topography and maps. All around, it's a very clean design and the speaker grills are at the bottom with the microphone, the USB Type-C port and the dual SIM tray. On the right side is where you've got the power button and volume controls. Uh, there's nothing on the left side here. And on the top is where you've got your microphone and additional set of speakers. While it's beautiful on the back, it's impossible to miss that curved waterfall display, the, the waterfall screen on the front of this device. I was eager to see how it would perform in reality and we'll get to that in just a bit. Everything about the design of this device screams flagship. It is definitely the kind of device that you would be proud to pull out in public and just hold. Let's now get to the beauty of this curved display on the Infinix Zero Ultra. This display is a 6.8 inch curved AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels and a 120 hertz refresh rate. The Infinix Zero Ultra display is very well done for watching videos and other regular content. I streamed content on both YouTube and Netflix and the viewing experience was seamless. I love how sharp, colorful and detailed videos are when you look at it on the Infinix Zero Ultra, especially when you stream at high quality on YouTube. Interestingly, this phone can stream as high as 4K content. So if you're a fan of the highest quality that you want to get, the Infinix Zero Ultra offers that on a platter. And you can just see that on YouTube here. The curved display adds its own touch to the all-round premium feel of this device. You can actually see the elements on the screen curve side to side. Also, one of my favorite things about having a curved display in 2022 is the ease of using gestures to go back. Rather than the sharpness that comes with swiping on a flat display, Display, your finger simply glides across and swipes back and forth. It just makes it a very intuitive experience. Let us now talk about the category that most people are usually worried about when they get a device, especially one in this price bracket, the performance. The Infinix Zero Ultra is powered by a MediaTek Dimensity 920, which is one thing I found a few people were skeptical about. I remember checking the comment section and a lot of people were like, why would you pay this much for a MediaTek processor? Well, we'll be back to that in a bit. Other features that this comes with include Google's Android 12 and Infinix XOS 12. And while on the topic, I cannot help but applaud Infinix for the improved user interface. 
on this guy. The, the UI of the older Infinix devices have always been a common pain point for many users, but Infinix has gone the extra mile on here to sort of fix it. They've improved the taste and the design the quality of this user interface compared to what we had previously. The first taste of this improved UI was on the Infinix Note 12 VIP, which is made even better on this device, especially with the curved display. How everything looks and feels makes it much more interesting. One of our favorite features that we loved about this here in the studio is this particular widget on the home screen that changes over time and it's based on your most recent and frequently used apps. It's called Suggestions, conveniently, and it's something that you usually get on iPhones and yeah, the apps that you frequently use will just show up there for easy access. You also get 256 gigabytes of storage on here, 8 gigs of RAM, and as you would expect in 2022, the device also brings memory fusion that allows you to take up to 5 gigabytes of your storage to get 13 gigabytes of RAM. While it's easy to beef this device because it carries a MediaTek chip, I did not notice any underperformance on this device. In a couple of days that I've used it as my main driver with gaming, streaming, texting, streaming and texting at the same time, I never suffered any drop in performance during the usage of this guy. Now, playing COD was smooth, sharp, and seamless. If you're a frequent Call of Duty gamer, you'll be able to play at the high graphics quality and frame rate. You have to settle for low graphics quality to play the maximum frame rate. And while I played at the highest quality and frame rate that the game offered, it didn't lag. It's worth pointing out though, that for these high settings, you will need faster internet for it to work smoothly. I think Infinix was very ambitious with the level of features that it packed onto this device. And to add to it, they have it well optimized that they work as they should. Even down to the on-screen fingerprint sensor and the face unlock, they all worked seamlessly. In my Note 12 VIP review, I mentioned that the face unlock feature had gotten an upgrade and it's even better on this guy here. This is the most efficiently performing face unlock that we have seen here on an Infinix device. It is perfect to know that they are improving on these features. The face unlock may struggle under unfavorable lighting conditions and it may also struggle if you use glasses. There will be a hit or miss in those situations and still for the most part, um, I wanted to use that face unlock more often than with the older Infinix devices that we had here because it performed very well. It performed that good. The on-screen fingerprint scanner was a perfect implementation. It will not be, you know, split second quick, but it is swift and it is responsive. And most importantly, it never missed any time that I needed to use it in place of face unlock. So for all those who had reservations about using a MediaTek chip, I don't think you should have anything to worry about here. I think you will be fine. All right, let's now get to what I think is this device's most significant selling point, the fast charging feature or thunder charge. Just look at this charging brick. Infinix claims that this 180 watt charger would blast its 4500 milliamp hour battery from 0 to 100% in 12 minutes. The last crazy fast charging device was advertised at 17 minutes, 0 to 100% in 17 minutes. I thought that one was insane, but somehow Infinix managed to top it off with this one. Well, I did try to test it out and I could not get the advertised charging speed on my first test. When the phone got to 0% for the first time, it took about 17 minutes to go from 0 to 100%, despite not being as fast as advertised. Merely watching this device go from 0 to 100% was even mind-blowing. I did get a little worried that the result I was getting was so distant from the advertised charging speed. However, after watching a box therapist video where he tested it on camera, I saw that this device got from 0 to 100% in just over 12 minutes of charging. But hold on, pause. Uh, as impressive as it is to say, two major questions need answering. How safe is thunder charging? How safe is fast charging? And does the battery die as fast as it charges? Well, you'll be pleased to know that Infinix is again right ahead of you to ensure that they optimize and cater for those caveats. During my charging test, I did not notice any, uh, any unnecessary heating or overheating with this device, which is very important. Infinix has installed multiple layers of cooling to ensure that your battery does not get overloaded and doesn't turn into a time bomb. As far as the battery life, uh, that is also very decent on this device. 4,500 milliamp hours is not all the battery in the world. Still, it managed to last me more than 15 hours of consistent scrolling on social media, texting, and streaming content at very high quality. If you're a heavy user, you don't have to worry about so much because if your phone just dies, you can plug it, or if your phone is about to die, you can plug it and get like extra 10 hours 
10 to 12 hours you know by just plugging in for 10 minutes now let's address the next big thing about this device these cameras the primary camera on this device is 200 megapixels that's 200 megapixels why what do we need 200 megapixels for infinix Shire. it is also accompanied by a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor for portrait shots. This is a pretty exciting lineup of cameras and the performance that we got on these cameras was also decent. The regular wide and ultra wide shots looked like Infinix was finally starting to grasp its computational photography. But that is even more evident when you switch things up to the dedicated 200 megapixel mode and the night mode. In the 200 megapixel mode, there is so much detail captured that you can zoom into the photos taken and still be quite comfortable with the results. This is Mr. Key here. We zoomed and we saw, you know, a lot of detail. I was impressed by the images of the Infinix Zero Ultra, especially when it's taken under good lighting condition. I got what I would call the shock of my life in the night mode. Now, without saying much, here is a shot taken in the dark, you know, in normal mode, in dark. And here is a picture taken in night mode. Granted, it took like four seconds to process. iPhone would take like two seconds. The new iPhone would take two seconds. The iPhone 13 would take like three seconds. This took four seconds. Everything just sits right in night mode. The exposure, the detail capture, the skin tones, and this one gets a 10 out of 10. I feel like Infinix is cheating in this place. I don't know. If you, did they make the normal mode worse? for the night mode to be better. Or maybe the night mode is actually just that. On the front, we get a 32 megapixel selfie camera. And this is where I think Infinix could still invest some more. Portrait images look soft. While it blurred the background, um, it definitely had some intense processing going on that kind of hampered the quality a bit. This is the front facing camera video quality of the Infinix Zero Ultra. Let me know what you guys think of this video quality as well as the sound quality in the comment section down below i like how it performed when it came to front-facing video stabilization we see some improvements but similarities in quality and a slight crop when it's stabilized video isn't one of the strongest suits of this camera simply whipping out your phone and hitting record will give you footage that looks like what you've been seeing so far while it is in fact sharp there's still something left to be desired so all the fantastic things we've discussed about this phone is offered at 350,000 naira. That's about $540. This is definitely more expensive than most major devices that have come out this year. But you still have to admit that it looks nothing like any other mid-range device that have come out this year. I think that this device is in a tier of its own. It does not precisely compete in areas with the flagship devices that have come out this year though. Still, it ultimately leaves the mid-range competition that have come out this year in the dust. I found the Infinix Zero Ultra very interesting and I think it's worth the money that you'll be spending on it. Anyway, if you need a device that does not cost as much as the ultimate flagships but still allows you to feel like you're using one, then you can go for this guy. I look forward to how Infinix builds on this device in the future. I hope, you know, they improve upon this form factor. I really like this form factor. And that's it from me, guys. Be sure to hit that like button if you found this video useful and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it so you'll be first to know when we post a new video. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you guys in the very next video.